Hey, Crafters Big D here. And this week, we are kit bashing a model. Um, this week's the kit bash, and next week we'll have the paint job. Uh, but what we're doing is we are turning a Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought into a Death Guard uh, Leviathan Dreadnought. Now, if you go to Forge World, a Leviathan Dreadnoughts with the guns, like $120 plus dollars. Great figure, um, but that's a lot of money for a single model. Now, if I was a competition player, obviously I would need that piece. But I just want one to fool around with. Uh, the Redemptor Dreadnought, uh, the easy to build kit, is 40 bucks. So uh, far more reasonably priced. But the problem is you can't use those as a Death Guard. Well, they have the same footprint, or pretty close. I think the base on the Redemptor is actually a little bigger than the, uh, than the uh, Leviathan. Uh, but the basic Leviathan is a Butcher Cannon on one arm and a Siege Claw on the other which isn't that far off. There's a little kit bash needs to be done. And after the kit bash challenge earlier this year, kit bashing has gotten into my blood. So um, I wanted to make my own. Uh, and there's also a lot of pride in making with official pieces, making a counts as piece that people be like, oh yeah, that's no problem. We can see that. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I had some really great ideas on what I wanted to do. I, I mapped out ahead of time what I was going to do. Uh, so and I figured I'd, I'd show the process. So this first part is just me starting with the base pieces and putting it together. Next week, I'm going to show you my paint job, my paint scheme, and my methodology for making this thing look awesome. So um, let's get right to it and hit the table. So, the first step when you're doing a kit bash like this is uh, you go into your bits box and get out anything and everything you think will be useful. So I've grabbed a bunch of my extra chaos pieces, I've grabbed some cromlech doors, and some good nergly goodness stuff, um, and then we took our easy to build kit, and... Uh, We've already started modifying it. I cut the main hull sprue free so I have something to hold on to. And uh, first thing I'm doing is I'm sanding that entire front area down. I've uh, sized a piece that I want to stick on there. And uh, right now I'm just kind of uh, shaping to fit it on there. So we'll uh, continue shaping. We'll get this piece on when I've got this on and I've got a little bit more detailed on it, um, we'll take a look at it. And then we'll look at some of the other parts we're going to put together. So, we'll be back. Okay, so, a bit of drilling, a bit of filing, and we've got most of these good boobos looking things on here nice. So this is going to work for the main carapace piece. Now you notice I've kind of scratched these out here. Again, since we're making this into a Leviathan, it doesn't have these missile launchers, or grenade launchers, I'm sorry, these are grenade launchers or storm bolters. We're going to replace them with heavy flamers, which are supposed to be hell flamers. Now I, luckily I had from a uh, Lehman Russ, I've had some extra heavy flamers, so we're going to trim them off right at this main housing piece, and then we're going to glue these in to those pieces there. Um, I've also touched up on a couple other pieces. I grabbed an extra one of those boobos and I stuck it on a front of a leg here. Um, and then I've been working the other arm. I put a nice plate there. And uh, working on the back piece, I cut a bunch of it out and I'm sticking a major plate there. There's going to be a bit of putty work here too but I wanted to get this nice big gaping maw on the back of the uh, body here. 
So we're going to get some putty in here and fix this the rest of the way up and make it look like some fleshy, gooey, good stuff going on in there. Um, so let's, let me get this part assembled and get these parts modified. Um, and again, this is just a matter of just clipping pieces, finding where you like them and gluing them down. I mean, that's really all you're doing. This is all your imagination and where you're getting pieces from. Now, what I will detail next is where I'm taking the claw hand. And what I've done is I've started with this. Um, I've put a nice mouthy, tonguey piece on this shoulder guard here. And I've assembled the arm uh, because, as you see, I've clipped off the fingertips. I'm going to be replacing those with the claws because this is a siege claw. It's also supposed to be a multi melt on that siege claw arm. So we're going to use some putty here to fill this up and smooth this all out. And then I've got some wings taken from those plague riders. I mean, not, not the wings. I've got those plague riders. I've got their legs. And I'm going to trim these off right at this knuckle here. And I'm going to put these claws. And the reason I've got the holes drilled is I'm actually going to pin each of them because they're going to be a pretty weak connection. So I've got four claws for four fingers. So I'm going to cut them off here, use my pin vise, drill a hole, and then stick a piece of wire in there and pin it in place. And then we're going to have each of these with a nice looking siege claw thing on each of these four fingers. So once we've got that done, uh, we can start assembly um, after we do a little bit of putty work. We've got to do some putty work on the back piece, but then we can start with our major assembly. We actually may be able to assemble first and put the putty on first, put the putty on afterwards, just so we can see. Let me see how these pieces come together. Because um, we're just assembling this as a normal kit. So we'll start putting these together. I'm going to get these fingertips on here. I may use a little bit of putty around where they meet in just to kind of make them look meatier. I haven't decided. It'll depend on how they look when they're in. But uh, this is coming together really well. So uh, let's get some claws in these fingers and start clean up an assembly and uh, we'll come back and look at the gun because I am doing a major modification in the gun to make it look like a butcher array. Um, I'm not going to be changing the gun out itself but I'm going to add some greebles to the bottom of the gun to make it look more savage. So uh, let's get some other pieces together and uh, we'll see what we got. We'll be back. Okay. So we've got most of this mocked up. We still have a lot of work to do on it, but we've got at least the pieces where we want them to be. Um, because it's an easy to build kit, this whole thing will still come apart, so we can still do the detail work we need to um, later on to smooth out these pieces, to fill in with the putty so that there's not these rough edges, uh, to do the base. Um, the pieces themselves are glued, but nothing is glued down. The, 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 the figure will come off the base, the arms, the torso will all come apart. Uh, so this part is pretty much set. So we're just waiting for this all to dry and cure. So what we've got left now is this arm. Now the one thing about the Butcher Cannon is that every time I see it, the, the Chaos version has a big hooking blade or some type of sharp object on the bottom side of the blade. Uh, just so they can punch or do something with it. So I took this extra Demon Prince sword. And I think I'm going to shave this so it's nice and flat and get a clean fit and I'm going to fit it so it sits inside of here but right up against it but not against the mechanic of the blade so in this area here so there's a nice blade on the bottom of this here now I've added this plate here and I'm going to make some fleshy bits come on squeezing out like they're trying to squeeze out through this part here um, probably using a combination of putty uh, because it is a flat plate and a curved thing. So we're going to use some a combination of some putty and some other effects I'm going to show you when we come back after everything's had a chance to cure. So we're going to put this here and then I'm going to go back into my bits box and I'm going to look through some of my pieces uh, from a bunch of chaos spawn and see if there's a couple extra uh, tentacles or whips or horns or something that I can stick in areas here and here where I think they're pretty bare. I don't think there's too many uh, with the other effects I'm going to be doing. I think I'm pretty good, uh, but I just want to look and see if there's anything that just really just screams at me, yes, I must use this. So 
Uh, let me take a look. We'll do one last pass if I make any major changes. And then once it's all cured, we'll come back with some PVA glue and super glue. And we're going to make some fleshy paste pieces on here. So I'll show you how we do that and we'll come back. Okay, so we are into day two. We've let all our glue dry. Uh, we've still got our pieces that we haven't glued together because it is an easy build, so they do come apart. But we've let all our glue dry up, all of our pieces solidify up, and now we can take a real assessment of where we're going to need to putty. We're going to need to fill this back area in here with some putty. That's a pretty huge gap, but that was something we were counting on. We want to make this piece look really fleshy and fill this in. And we got a gap here that's going to need to be filled in with some putty. Um, we're going to want to take a small amount of putty and smooth the blend. We're probably going to put a piece here and we're going to need to smooth these blends so these don't just look like they're tacked down. We want to make them look like they're growing out. So now this plate's fine but we're going to probably want to use a little bit of putty around here to build up this area around here to look these spikes because you'll notice there's a gap there because it was a rounded surface and we put a square piece on it. Um, the guns look good. They should be fine. Again the main thing we're going to need to get some in there. Looking at uh, the arm, again, the same thing. We want to smooth this with some putty to make this look an outright growth. Uh, and we're going to want to put a build up here just to make this look more of a designed piece. Uh, a better assessment of the claws, we're probably going to put a little bit in there using a shaping tool to just kind of blend those finger blades into it. I really like how those blades came out, though. They are really, really good looking, very organic blades on this mechanical hand. Um, I'm digging that a lot. So Kit Bash is going really the way you want. And this is a nice thing. When you go into knowing what you're looking at and knowing what you want to kind of do when you start off, uh, you've got a plan. Go in with a plan. Um, in this case, I think we're pretty good here. This one, this arm, um, I think this arm is pretty well set, what we've done here. We might put a little putty here or something to build up some flesh like here, but this splotch of glue here does look like it's a piece of flesh and these spikes will be coming out of it. So um, I like the way this gun already has very little work to be done here. Uh, so that's good. And then as you can see on the base, we did, uh, I glued some beads down this morning for the bubbles to kind of mark where I want to have the Nurgle's rot. I'm going to probably use some sap gravel or sand and I'm going to fill in the spot here and probably extend the two resin pieces that I've done and glued to the base. I'm probably going to extend them out so it looks like it's a little isthmus or uh, something in the middle there. I'm not sure yet. Um, I know I want to extend them off the edges here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to fill in the middle part. I might leave that as a big um, area to just to put more um, Nurgle's rot in when I do this. Because all the areas that have the bubbles that's going to be left flat and primed, and then it's just going to have Nurgle Drop put over it. I might paint it with some shadow tones so that the semi-transparency of the Nurgle Drop does get some color tone to it. But for the most part, that's going to be just glossy Nurgle Drop. Um, so, and again, this isn't glued down either. So we can get a good assessment on here. It is a tight fit though. There we go. Um, this actually transitioned really well, so I don't think we need to do anything work there. Uh, we might do, we might do some marring work on here, and we'll show you how we do that with some of our other techniques while we're working on it. I might want to just kind of dirty up a leg or something here. As long as I've got one piece over here, this is fine. I think we're going to just dirty up this leg right through here. So, um, so let's go back and, uh, let's get our putty. Um, you can use green stuff. I'm going to use milliput. Uh, let's go get our milliput and uh, mix some of it up and start applying it and show you guys how I use it. Okay, so we've got some milliput mixed up just a little bit. And we're going to do two ways of, of blending pieces in. So the first way is obviously just using some sort of putty. You can use milliput, you can use green stuff. And we're going to just get a piece, roughly get it in place, and then start blending it in.
So as you can see here, we just kind of get it filled in, make it look kind of fleshy. Use a little bit of water and smooth it so it blends in. And uh, we're gonna go around and fill the rest of it in. But you kind of see what we're doing here. We wanna make this look kind of like meat protruding from the machine. So using a toothpick to clear up places where you want it to look good. Um, again, that's part of the thing with sculpting and using using this as a, a miracle. You have a lot more room to kind of be gross and work in stretching marks and work in, you know, little, little nasty looking pieces. We're going to bulb some down around the bottom here and get that all kind of a big bulby mess down there that's just dripping off his back. So we'll come back to that. Now the other thing we're doing is on the arm here, we're using a small piece here because you can see how this housing has a little bit of a nub on the end of it. We're gonna work in, and again, don't be afraid to use tools and whatnot to get nice flush fits or flush edges and then work your way back from it. All right, so nice, that's now a nice filled in piece. So when that dries and is painted, it'll be completely unnoticeable. Now, the other way of blending pieces in and we're going to do this over here as another trick I've learned uh, using a little bit of PVA glue I'm just going to kind of run a bead there get it where we want on there and then we're just going to use tiny amount of super glue and this will make a nasty looking fleshy like texture to it and now once that's painted It'll give this lovely kind of shreddy, fleshy type texture to it. Be really, really nice. So um, these are two techniques to use to really kind of make gross pieces look gross. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and smooth out my other edges and smooth out my other pieces. And then we're going to get this thing assembled. And maybe do some. we'll do some base work when we come back. So we'll be back. Okay, crafters. So you can see I've started doing the glue and super glue mix over here, but I want to keep this in line with my other Nurgle bases. So we're taking a little bit of this Milliput and kind of bridging the gap. Now we're going to take another small piece of milliput and I'm going to roll out a little snake with it. Now I've been doing this for my bases so if you saw my Nurgle base tutorial you saw what I did here. I'm going to take this just smooth it with a little bit of water. Make a little snake. And then I'm going to take a comb, which again, I'm going to pre wet a little bit so it doesn't stick. And we made our little worm. I'm going to stick the worm in a hole here and just kind of drape it on the base. 
even if I'm not liking how those slipes are going. There we go. I've got a nice little wormy crawling out of its hole. When that dries, that'll be great. Now, as I saw, I did the, some of this, that glue and skin work there. So I'm gonna show you how we do this again. We take a little bit of the glue. Take a toothpick. dry up. We're going to have a beautiful base. Put these legs on. And as we can see, just by marking our holes, it's all good. All right, let the base dry. The milliput dry and we're gonna prime this thing and we're gonna come back and start talking about the paint job all right so just a super quick update um, we've got the piece put together here now obviously these still can all come apart but uh, you know we don't have the pieces glued together um, I don't know if I'm going to or not I may or may not I haven't decided yet um, but, uh, here we go. Um, this is ready to start painting. I got the primer on it. Um, there's one piece a little weak. I might reinforce it with a little gooey stuff and then paint it up from there. So, uh, for our next step, our next step is to break out the airbrush and, uh, make this bad boy green and work our way up from there. So, uh, let me get this piece reinforced here and, uh, Break out the airbrush and let's go. So there's the bill. I hope you guys like this. I hope you guys found it informative. I hope there was things that I showed you behind my methodology and some of the techniques I use that uh, you guys will be able to go away with and use in your own building and your own kit bashing. It's not just for Nurgle. It's not just for chaos. Sometimes you just want to make something look different or make it look better or change it up. And that's what Kish Bashing is all about. So um, take that, move on, and do some kit bashing on your own. Take a, take a model and do something with it to make it fit your army or start a new army and take an old model and make it new. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please like, subscribe, ring that bell so you know when my next one's coming. Um, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon members and uh, follow me on Instagram and uh, here and everything else and all that goodness. <laughs> Thanks again and game on, folks. <laughs>